Hi guys, this is George back here with another video and welcome to another one of my top 10s 2020 and today I'm going to be breaking down my top 10 bucket list roller coasters. These are roller coasters all around the world that I definitely want to make sure I ride. These are the ones that are highest on my bucket list and of course this list has been very difficult to make because there are so many roller coasters out there that I would love to go and experience however these are the 10 roller coasters that I would like to experience most so let's kick things off with number 10 so then guys number 10 is Formula Rossa at Ferrari World in Abu Dhabi this is the world's fastest roller coaster taking guests from 0 to 149 miles per hour in around 5 seconds so apart from the launch here the ride doesn't look the ride doesn't look like like it has an incredible layout however I just want to know how it feels to experience the world's fastest roller coaster of course I've ridden roller coasters like Top Thrill Dragster and King Dakar which are similar rides to it they both reach a, they all reach a similar speed however they all have well Top Thrill Dragster and King Dakar they both have a very different layout to Formula Rossa because they obviously have a giant top hat and this one has more helixes and then it has a couple of airtime hills at the end there are no inversions on this However, it looks like a really good coaster. It looks very intense. The helixes look really fun and the airtime hills look like they would deliver some really good airtime. So, this is definitely a roller coaster that I want to make sure that I get on the world's fastest roller coaster, Formula Rossa. So then guys, number 9 is Railblazer at California's Great America. This is an RMC single rail and it opened in 2018 and it was only the second one to open to the public. Now, it might it might be the layout that quite a few of these single rail coasters are because of course there's two of them out there now and then one of them's being built at Silverwood and there's one coming to South Dakota I think it is. But these things look incredible. They look very aggressive. The way that they go through the elements is amazing. They look incredibly fast. They look like they have some of the best pacing on any roller coaster. Because, of course, they're not really actually insanely fast. However, when you look at it, it is very fast due to the way how these are made. So, of course, with this being a single rail coaster, then it is only one guest per row. And then this can seat eight guests per train. There are three inversions on this ride. And it looks like a really snappy roller coaster. Sure, it might not be the longest roller coaster out there. However, it looks really fun, snappy, with some really good elements. And, as I mentioned, some of the best looking pacing on any roller coaster. So, my ninth bucket list roller coaster is Railblazer. So then guys, number eight is Conda, which is the brand new Intamin mega coaster that will be opening at Wallaby, Belgium in 2021. So, this is going to feature more airtime than any other steel coaster in the world, which is incredible. It will feature around 15 seconds of airtime. It also has a twisted double down, and it has a really weird turnaround as well. There are lots of different elements on this. There's also an outer banked turn on this that looks brilliant, and the trains are some of the nicest trains I've ever seen on a roller coaster. They have a really nice nose car on here. As well as that, it looks like there's going to be some good theming around the coaster. We've already seen some of the theming around the station, and that's starting to look brilliant. And it's just started testing as well, and it looks incredible. Hopefully, in 2021, I will get out there and experience this. This is definitely a roller coaster I want to make sure I ride next year. Restraints look really nice. It's just one of those Intamin lap bars. And, yeah, of course, as I mentioned, the 15 seconds of airtime. So this ride does feature a lot of airtime. It is all about the airtime and I love airtime on roller coasters. It's one of my favourite parts to a roller coaster. So there we go. Conda is definitely a roller coaster that I would like to experience. So then guys, number six is Tega at Linan Maki in Finland. This is an Intamin Blitz coaster and it's opened in 2019. It features two launches, it features four inversions, and this thing looks incredible. This looks a bit like a mini, a, a less, a, a not as good themed Taron at Fantasialand, of course. So, of course, I love the way this looks. So you've got the blue track with the black supports, and then you've got the bird for the train, the big orange bird. And in my opinion, it looks really nice. This is one of those rides that I'd love to just be able to stand next to it and watch it off-ride as well as ride it. 
As well as that, it looks like there's some really good airtime moments. It looks like it has some good speed and some good hang time in places as well. There's one particular moment before the Immelman that looks like a really solid airtime moment. Really good looking hang time as well. It looks like there'll be some good hang time at many points in the ride. As well as that, multiple different twists and turns. It looks like a pretty intense coaster, this, and it's definitely one that I would like to experience. I don't know when the time will come that I get myself out to Finland, but hopefully one day the day will come where I get where I get to experience Tega. So then guys, number six is Orion at Kings Island. This is the B&M Giga Coaster that opened earlier this year. So of course this one is this is one of those coasters where people think is it a hyper or is it a giga? Due to the fact that it has a maximum height of 287 feet. So therefore you may think it's a hyper coaster because a hyper coaster is a roller coaster that has a max height of between 200 and 300 feet. And then of course a giga coaster is a roller coaster that has a max height of between 300 and 400 feet. So it does feature a 287 foot max height. However, it does have a 300 foot drop. So therefore, in my opinion, that does make this a giga. However, as well as that, there are multiple different elements on this ride that I would really like to experience. Of course, the airtime hills. It looks like there would be some amazing floater airtime on this coaster. It doesn't, it doesn't look like the best giga coaster. Of course, there is Fury 325 does exist, and that does look like a better coaster. However, I'd rather ride this one because this one does definitely look better themed. So, of course, Cedar Fair have really started to get in there with the theming at them at recently, and the queue line and oh, and the overall area that Orion is in looks really well themed. So, I'd like to ride this because for the full package, because of course you go through the really well themed queue line and then you go on this incredible coaster. So Orion is definitely a roller coaster I'd like to get on. It was once my number one bucket list coaster, but it's not anymore. Some have come and overtook it, and I've just rearranged my list a little bit for a couple of things. But this is still a roller coaster that I would love to experience, and it is still very high on my bucket list. Here we go. We're going over to Germany now to Fantasialand, and my fifth bucket list roller coaster is Taran at Fantasialand. This is an Intamin Blitz coaster that opened in 2016 and it might not feature any inversions, however it definitely makes up in terms of other elements, or it looks like it makes up in terms of other elements. So of course it features two launches and the theming around the area and around the coaster looks absolutely incredible. It's located in the themed area of Klugheim, I believe that's how it's pronounced, and the theming around this area looks absolutely stunning. So of course you've got all the waterfalls in there, you've got all the rock work, all the buildings as well. It looks incredible and with how the coaster just weaves its way through all the buildings and under the path and then over the path and then into the, all the rocks, it looks like a really incredible overall experience. It's not just a coaster, this is a themed experience coaster and that is why I want to ride it so much. As well as that I've heard incredible things about it as well. The airtime looks really good on it. For there's, there doesn't seem like there would be many, there would be too many points where you get airtime, however there looks to be a couple points where you get some airtime. But the main reason why I'd like to experience this coaster is because of just that, the way it weaves it, it like imagine, like going through all the rock works and then you're going through this building and then you're going up over the pathway and then you dipping down underneath the pathway into this building. It looks like it would be stunning. This looks like a big this looks like a big icon. Of course it is manufactured by Intamin though. But Taran is definitely a roller coaster I would love to experience. It looks like an incredible roller coaster and hopefully one day the day will come that I experience this. So then guys, number four is currently, as of recording, the only extreme spinning coaster in existence. So of course in 2018, Mac Rides built their first ever extreme spinning coaster and this is of course Time Traveller at Silver Dollar City. Now, this is kind of like their family spinning coaster, however of course this one features launches, it features inversions and it looks like a really just weird ride. It, it, it's definitely something different. So of course this is kind of like a Mac Mega Coaster, however of course it is a spinning coaster. So it features three inversions, it features two launches, it doesn't look like it has the most intense launches of anything. In fact it doesn't look like a particularly intense roller coaster. However, I would still love to experience this. The inversions look amazing and I'd love to experience what it feels like to be going through an inversion or all these other elements that this coaster has 
while spinning round. Of course, it, it features a vertical drop out of the station as well. This coaster looks amazing, and of course we are getting an extreme spinning coaster at Plopsaland Japan next year, so I look forward to experiencing that at some point. However, this one still looks absolutely incredible. So then guys, number three is Hypercoaster at Land of Legends, or Flash at Lua Adventure, I believe it's called in China. So these are, the reason why these are both on the same number is because they're clones, that they're, they're both the exact same ride. So of course Flash is the one over in China and then Hypercoaster is located in Turkey so my chances of getting over to Turkey are a lot higher than my chances of getting over to China. But this looks incredible. So this is these are both Mac Rides Hypercoasters and they both feature the world's tallest vertical loop and it takes you over and it takes you 171 feet high I believe. This vertical loop is massive. As well as that, it features a massive curved drop, features all sorts of airtime hills and a zero G roll as well. This coaster looks brilliant and the park looks brilliant as well. It's definitely a park that I would love to go to and this is definitely a coaster I'd love to ride. Of course, I have experienced a few different roller coasters manufactured by Mack Rides. However, this one definitely looks to be, in my opinion, the world's greatest Mac Rides roller coaster, and of course, if I ever get to ride this, I'll be making my judg judgment on that. On if I think it's the world's best Mac coaster, however, it definitely looks like it could be the best. Of course, DC Rivals does exist, but this one still looks stunning, and that loop looks like something else. The amount of hang time that you must get on that loop looks absolutely amazing. The zero G roll looks really good as well, and it looks like it has some really good speed going through the coaster as well. And one of the best things, it doesn't look like it loses that speed. A lot of roller coasters, towards the end, it'll lose the speed it once had. However, this one looks like it just keeps going and going and going, and it doesn't slow down until that final break run. This looks like an incredible coaster, and hopefully I'll get to experience it someday. So then guys, we have got to number two, and number two is Jersey Devil coming to Six Flags Great Adventure in 2021. Of course, this was supposed to be their coaster for 2020, however, things happened, and obviously it couldn't open this year. This is going to be the tallest, fastest, and longest single rail coaster when it opens, and... As of recording, it is the only one that we know is opening with a different layout. Of course, there's a few with the same layout as Railblazer and Wonder Woman. However, this one has a completely different layout. It will feature an 87 degree drop. There will be three inversions on this coaster. It will reach a top speed of 56 miles per hour. And this thing looks amazing. The airtime on this thing looks amazing. The elements look amazing. And of course, just like with Railblazer, it looks like it flies through the layout. So, of course, with it being a single rail coaster... With, you own, with it only being one guest per row, it does make the coaster feel faster. Of course, it will reach a top speed of 56 miles per hour. However, it, from, the PO, from the animations and from the other RMC single rail coasters, they, they look like they fly around the track. The amount of airtime on this thing looks incredible. This looks like that when it opens, it could be one of the world's most aggressive roller coasters. But there we go. Hopefully one day I will get to experience this coaster. Of course, I have been to the park before. However, obviously, I've not ridden this. And I don't, I don't know when the time will come that I ride it, but hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later. It definitely, in my opinion, looks like it will be the world's best single rail coaster. So then, guys, we have got to the number one spot. And my number one bucket list roller coaster is the brand new for 2020 fly at Fantasia Land. This is the world's first Vacom flying coaster. It's the world's first flying coaster to feature a launch and it is also the world's longest flying coaster. So this features two launches, it features two inversions and this thing looks incredible. This is basically the Vacoma flying coaster version of Taran. With, with, of course, it weaves its way through all the buildings, underneath the path and over the path, and then you've got the sections where you go into the parts where you can't see from the paths. From what it looks like in the area, you can't actually see too much of the coaster. And, of course, there is the amazing hotel in that area, Hotel Charles Lindbergh, which has recently opened. And from the top of that balcony, you can get some... Um, from the top of the hotel, you can get some amazing views over the coaster. It do this doesn't look like to be the tallest or fastest flying coaster. However, 
it definitely makes up for it in other ways because the look of this coat, it looks amazing. The area it's in is amazing. This coaster looks absolutely stunning. And if there is one roller coaster that I really, really want to experience out there in the world, it is Fly at Fantasialand. This thing looks incredible. And was, of course, it recently won the award for best roller coaster of 2020 that opened in 2020. It looks incredible, and of course, with this flying coaster as well, it's a bit different to a B&M, how with a B&M, it'll tilt you into the flying position in the station, and then you won't tilt out of that flying position until you go back into the station. However, with this one, you'll leave the station in a normal position. It'll tilt you into a flying position as you're on your way to the launch, and then, when you reach the brake run, it puts you back into a normal position so you're not waiting on the brake run for ages in that flying position because of course that gets a bit annoying on B&M flying coasters I know on Galactica I've been waiting on the brake run for a while in that flying position and it's not the most comfortable in the world so at least you do get to be lowered back down into that normal position if you're stuck on the brake run but of course with Fantasialand you're not going to be stuck on the brake run are you? The, the Fantasialand look like they have great operations but this coaster looks stunning hopefully the time will come one day that I get to experience this incredible looking coaster. So then guys, that is now the end of this video here. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at George Kelly Roller Coasters, George William Kelly and George Kelly Animals. Message me on Snapchat at George Kelly. Follow me on Twitter at George Kelly and check out my other YouTube channel at Wealthy Eagle. If you, if you, of course this list is my opinion, if you want to leave your top bucket list coasters in the comments, feel free to, I would love to know if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, and what coasters would be on your list. Thank you very much for watching, make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe, stay safe everyone, and I will see you all later. Bye!